Hey folks, welcome back to the Lake Y Project. James Hall with Bassmaster, John Jones, our resident stud of a uh, biologist. I'll take with that. Lookout Ranch and Fountain Management. Uh, we're we're gonna have have a discussion about the the fish, the actual bass that um, that are in not just Lake Y, but in your lakes and even public reservoirs, and and th they're not all created equal. Absolutely. And so if you go back a couple of videos, uh, you'll see the last time that we did a, um, a, a electro fishing survey here. And you will notice that the biologists were, were taking uh, clips of the fins mm -hmm. and, that, and then your crew is going to send those in for some DNA testing. So that is above my pay grade in mm -hmm. understanding. So if you could uh, define uh, A, what that process looks like and B, why it's important. You bet. You know, this is something that People have been arguing for a long time, but today with recent advances in technology, it's now affordable where you can really look into what's happening here. And um, so the process as it stands today is the team will come out, we'll do an electrofishing survey, we'll take a small fin clip off each fish or a swab, depending on how we're doing it. And we'll send in that, that sample and we'll get a report back um, that shows percentage Florida genes and percentage native genes. Hmm. You know, some variability about what you call native, but Florida's pretty standard today. And, um, you know, at that point, we'll put together a rough estimation of the percent Florida in your lake. But it's important to note, I mean, I would say it's fact to me, that if you want to grow big fish, that you need to have some pure 100%, 95% or better, pure Florida bass. If you don't have that, you basically have no chance of growing truly large fish. Um, without getting into the, the specifics, eventually we'll get a, a, you know, something out of a report or something along those lines to show it, but um, the, the fish have got to be pure if you want to get fish over 10 pounds with any frequency. Mm. So um, the average private lake today probably is, I don't know, we'll call it 20, 25%. Florida genes, but that doesn't mean that that fish, to me, it doesn't mean that that fish is 25% better. To mm -hmm. me, what, the uh, only thing that matters is if how, what percentage of 100% Florida bass you have in your lake. So, uh, so if we have a fish that's 70% uh, of Florida in their in their DNA structure and, and uh, the rest is native, then that, that fish is not going to uh, see the improvement in growth rate just because it has more Florida. What you're saying is if it's, it's all Florida or nothing as it relates to trophy fish. That's the, you know, We sampled at this point thousands and thousands of fish from thousands of reservoirs, private reservoirs, of course. Mm -hmm. And that's what the data says. Wow. The, say, the data says to grow truly big bass, it needs to be a pure Florida bass. Are there freaks that stand outside of that? Sure. But, you know, it's already hard enough to grow a 10 pound bass. Do you really want a one out of a hundred chance to get right. it up there in addition to how hard it is to get up to, to 10 pounds to begin with? And mm -hmm. the answer is no. Um, right. So, you know, the percent Florida, you need to know <laughs> that, again, when, on average, when we look at lakes, a lake that hasn't been managed or was stocked years and years ago, with very little exception, is probably going to be 20% or less as far as its Florida genes. And there'll be almost no pure Florida in that lake. Pure Floridas are not accident. They're brought in. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to bring them as, as fingerlings, not as adults. Um, but you, you've got to have pure Florida fish if, if the end goal is truly trophy fish. So that's one goal, uh, if, you know, that every every angler, of course, has when they're on the water trying to catch fish is to catch a trophy. And as manage, managers of a fishery, you certainly want trophy fish. However, <clears throat> as a lot of viewers may are probably thinking right now, but I want to be able to catch them. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to catch them all the time. So we're here in Alabama where the winters uh, are certainly a bit more feisty than they get down in Florida. And sometimes that cold water can shut down the Florida fish bite. Have you seen that? Has that been a complaint that you, you've experienced that, that pure Floridas are harder to catch whenever it gets uh, in that cold weather? Well, certainly that's been brought up to me many, many times, but <clears throat> I don't buy into it truthfully, not in a private water scenario. Um, <laughs> we have pure Florida populations in the panhandle of Texas where it ices over every winter in the <laughs> northern reaches of Arkansas at high elevations where it ices every winter. And um, 
I think you want to put them in. And it, I, I think you want to bring them in no matter what. Now, I'm not saying that means you, if you lived in, in Missouri, I'm sure you'd want to have some F1s in there too, because you have to acknowledge the fact that Florida's can get fungus when it gets really, really cold. Mm. But you want some pure, you want some pure individuals if you're going to go for the big fish. Now, going to, to catchability, I don't know really where I stand as an angler on this. We as a company stock pure Florida's at probably 99.5% mm. of the lakes. Wow. That's all we do. Um, and unless a client makes us do it for one reason or another, um, we just won't stock any anything. But I know from years of sampling and years of doing this that what happens in a private lake is the genetic potential of the population goes down with time. Every day that that lake is around, the native influence is going to put negative pressure on my pure Florida gene. Sure. Um, you know, in a, a lake that's killed and started from scratch, it's nice. You get to start with great genes all the way across. But in a lake like this, and, you know, we'll be talking about the how the results end up here. Mm -hmm. um, what you're going to want to do is put in pure Florida fingerlings year after year after year. And what your goal is, is not to have brood fish or stud fish or parents of those fish. Your goal is to take those fish that we stock and let those grow up to be adults. And um, they're going to have the best growth when stocked as fingerlings, do it for successive years. And that's not something you're probably ever going to stop doing. You're going to do it. Luckily, it's one of the most affordable improvements that you can do hmm. in a private lake. A couple hundred bucks an acre is more than enough to make a big difference in your lake over time. Um, it's cheaper than feeding, it's cheaper than fertilization, it's cheaper than spraying, it's cheaper than stocking shad, it's cheaper than all those things. Hmm. So one of the one of the items that makes the most difference actually costs the least. Well, and something you said is interesting there because I think it's um, a misconception is that if you stock a couple of thousand Florida bass in there, that that is going to change the genetic profile of the fish that are already in there. And even if it does uh, add a little bit more Florida to each bass in, in what you were saying is that that doesn't matter. Nope. The only thing that's going to matter is that one pure Florida and how big that individual bass can get. Yeah. You know, years ago there was the you know, there was all the noise about F1 fish and mm -hmm. all the things that came along with it. So it's been proven now that was not where you wanted to be. You wanted right. to be pure Florida. So you're right. A fish that's pure Florida breeding with a 50% Florida in here. That's, I'm being real sloppy with genetics here, but mm -hmm. makes a 75% Florida bass. Well, guess what? It still doesn't have the genetic potential to grow truly big fish with any frequency. There's always an outlier. Mm -hmm. But again, at this point, I've had the luxury of looking at thousands and thousands of fish from thousands of bodies of water, and it's very clear. It needs to be a pure Florida. And um, when you start from scratch, there's some different strategies, but if you have an existing lake and part of your goal, doesn't have to be your singular goal, part of your goal is to have big, big fish, mm -hmm. you have to be on some sort of supplemental stocking as a routine for as long as you're going to have that lake. Um, that's, you know, that's relatively new for people to understand that, but it's a fact. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible information. Um, and so we're 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 looking forward to um, kind of moving that direction in the future with this lake, and and kind of see what the results end up being. But based on everything that you've seen, I can't imagine uh, adding Florida and pure Florida to this lake would be anything but a positive. Well, outcome. unless I'm surprised, um, which happens, but rarely. Okay, um, it's possible. If you have average genetics in this lake that we've seen some of the biggest fish that your genetic can produce. And again, excluding the very, very rare outlier. Mm -hmm. And so if your genetics are average, then your fish are only going to get up to average size. We see them really start to peak a native genetic fish or mixed genetic fish around that five to six pound is where the Florida bass really become dominant and the mixed genetics kind of park there. Um, and you see fewer individuals in the larger sizes with those mixed genetics. And so, you know, that's exciting to me to think about that we've seen some of the bigger fish probably that are yeah. gonna come out of these genetics. And we'll see, I could be surprised. But when you think about it, it'd be very, very hard for this lake to have had pure Florida genetics, even if it had been stocked that way. Uh, and you say, well, why is that? Well, think about every flood, every flood that comes through here, fish are coming from upstream, 
fish are coming from downstream and their progeny is being spread through the lake. They breed and, and it makes a nice mix. I want to go back to something that you, that has been an argument of mine for a long time about the fish that don't bite and the floors that don't bite. Yeah. Well, look, you know, you, you've heard Brandon say, and you've heard me say that to grow a 10 pound bass in perfect conditions, it's going to need a hundred pounds of bait. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when you're a fisherman, what you're mimicking with your bait is bait, is forage fish. Right. So to get to be a 10 pound Florida bass, you had to have ate a hundred pounds of bait. So if you're a good fisherman, <laughs> you should I'm, be able to... I, I'm not claiming as Okay, such. but the, the point is still there that it had to eat fish to grow mm -hmm. and a Florida has to eat fish just like a mixed genetic fish has to eat. Mm -hmm. And um, what I think has happened in private waters where this misnomer comes from is that you know, so few lakes are started from scratch with good genetic fish. Mm -hmm. Usually those lakes have good management, which usually means that you're not gonna go catch 400 little fish in a day. You're gonna catch fewer fish, but they're gonna be more quality. And people have translated that to saying the fish don't bite. Mm -hmm. No, the answer is in a well-managed lake, there's less fish to catch because instead of having lots of fish that are skinny, we're trying to have a moderate number of fish that are healthy and growing. So. Um, again, takes food to get big, and the Florida's got to eat just like a native does. Beautiful. That's excellent, excellent. Words of wisdom, words of wisdom. Uh, and more words of wisdom are going to continue uh, as we continue this uh, project at Lake Y. Uh, guys at home, I hope you all enjoy this. hope you learned something. I did. I learned something in the last five minutes. Uh, so join us next time, and uh, we'll bring more words of wisdom to your uh, to your computer screen. Well, I'm looking forward to this. Genetics are fun, you know, and it's fun to watch you track a population and watch the difference. You're going to see it. It's yeah. clear, and uh, it's fun to be able to prove things through science. And this is something you can prove. All right. Well, we will see the proof next time.